Somebody say that your boyfriend's looking for me. Ooh, that's cool. That's cool. Well, you should... We recorded and I wrote boyfriend long before that happened. In February. Yeah. So this thing happened, yeah, this thing happened in July. Yeah. We just had the song. And the funny thing is was boyfriend was already scheduled to be one of the singles. We were already discussing all type of so when this happened, yeah. it was like why not capitalize off of it in a clever yeah. way? I was sitting here, we were running around all day. I had meetings and I was in my house and um Carl was here. He just was in town. He's one of my good friends. He's a dope videographer, but he's really like my friend. So he was in town just hanging out. He always has, has his camera with him. So when LA FaceTimed me, he started rolling, just filming. So, um, cause he always tells me like, you got to capture every part, you know, you never know, like documentaries, like, cause my whole life, I've, I have a lot of my career yeah. documented, believe it or not, I have tons of footage. So um, he was like, yo, you, so he kept the camera rolling. So that was a whole moment. And I watched the video for the first time about two and a half weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And he filmed my reaction from it. And it was, it was really real. So the post that you see today is, is really organic. And then when I hit, LA back I was just like wow like mm -hmm. you know because it's been a journey with the song we uh, myself and Camper Camper produced the, the track and then when I wrote the song it was a whole different beat so it was so many different productions and switching out and adding this and changing this yeah. so it was like a whole yeah. journey <laughs> this song obviously with Usher in mind I had already been working on the project and um to be totally honest with you all right, you got to think back to his career. You have, uh, you make me wanna. That concept is so different. It's so, like I had never heard, I remember when I first heard you make me wanna, I thought to myself, I would never heard a concept like this before. So then when I heard, um, you don't have to call and you remind me, I felt the same way. It's like, oh, these yeah. concepts are so different. And then when you hear, you got it bad, you know what I mean? It was like, I never heard somebody sing, you got it bad. Like, so I wanted to say the thing. So be, to be totally honest with you, and I don't want to, you know, but I named the song, Your Boyfriend. You are right. Usher Raymond. Like, yeah, so, you know, so what I was trying to do was fall in line with the, you don't have to call, you make me wanna, you remind oh me, God. your boyfriend. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody says that your boyfriend is looking for me. So, um, I was trying to tell that story and make people feel, hopefully, how I felt when I first heard "You Don't Have to Call" and "You Remind Me" and "You Make Me Wanna," um, kind of give them that 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 storyline that hasn't been told yet. I don't right. I don't think I've ever heard that concept before, and um, so that's what I just always challenge myself. When you're talking about art, artists like Usher and like Beyonce's and like Brandy's and Monica's, those iconic artists. You want to make sure that you write something that challenges them because they have such iconic records that, mm -hmm. that have kind of been staples in R&B and pop music. So I always want to make sure that when I'm writing for Usher, that um, I'm saying something that's going to be like, oh, wow, like this is this is something I didn't think about. Or when a listener hears it, they should be able to think like, oh, my God. And to be totally honest with you guys, because I'm just I just I'm a fan of, of his music and he's my brother, you know godfather to my to my daughter and my son but yeah. but he's my friend and i'm a fan so when i heard the rest of the album yeah. i just was like you know he, but he was playing me the album and i was like this is an incredible album so when i heard good good la sent me good good a few weeks ago and i was floored you know what i mean i was like man i wish i wrote this like yeah. this concept was so incredible so um and like i'm one of those people who i just want to see I want to see Usher do well because when Usher does well, the music business does well. You ever notice yeah. how good the music business yeah. is, does when Usher does well? And I'm going to tell you why. Because whenever Usher does well, it means that it's a quality piece of work. So whenever there's quality music in the marketplace, then mm -hmm. executives, artists are searching yeah. for people to give them that right. quality. Now, when there's a bunch of fluff and there's a bunch of mm -hmm. um, lackluster writing, then right. it's like anybody can come and fill in this space. But when quality music is at the forefront, when Beyonce is right. doing well with an incredible body of work, you know that you have to go to Dream to get that. So when Usher is doing well, it's like, I, I know where to go to get that energy. And I got this one artist that's waiting in the wing and I need him to come with a record. Who do we call? But when music doesn't have its substance and it doesn't have that, uh -huh. that you know, 
je ne sais quoi, mm -hmm. that it means something, it feels something. Yeah. No, it feels great. And I think that um, um, I'm in a space right now where I really, you, so sometimes you need that reassurance. Um, the business, I'm, you know, I've been able to maintain and be in the music business for a very, very long time. Um, 23 years I've been in this business. I'm 40 years old, which in, is still a young man, but in music business age, I'm like, you know, I'm an OG, you know what I mean? Which I, which I embrace and I love. But I think that um, whenever you've been doing it this long, whenever you've been able to withstand storms and, and kind of reintroduce yourself in different ways, um, you know, a lot of people was mentioning the City Girl records and, and Pop Smoke songs and all those songs. So it's like, we still were able to reinvent ourselves in other ways. And I, and I think that I have a pen that can go in any place, but I think it's incredible to see people recognize how hard I work. So it's more, I, I don't think that the praise and the recognition is, is anything about the accolades. I think that it feels good to get that recognition when you know how hard it is to thrive in this business. To write, to have one song be a top right, 20, right. let's let's forget number one, or to have the song be the top mm -hmm. 20 song in America when there are 600,000 songs submitted to uh, mm -hmm. Spotify on a daily basis, 600,000 a day. So to have one song be top 20, mm -hmm. now let alone top five, top 10, number one, to be able to do it as many times as myself, Dream, Esther Dean, John Tay Austin, Brian Michael Cox, you know, to be able to do it as many times as we've been able, Sean Garrett, and, you know, list goes on. To be able to do it as many times as we've been able to do it, it's difficult. I think people are, they, they compliment you and say, wow, you had a lot of hits. But you have to understand that this is very difficult to consistently do. Just being on Usher's record, who is my friend, my brother, who I love, mm -hmm. who I would fight and die for and kill for, it's still yeah. difficult for me to get on his project. So to not only be on a project but have a record that people want to make a video and say, we're going to release this to introduce yeah. the project, that's a difficult task. So the flowers are not about, oh, wow, you, you did, this song is really, no, the flowers mean something because you're in the trenches every day and you're sacrificing and you got ups and downs and everybody thinks everything is all glittery. Sometimes times can be really dark and really difficult to be able to withstand and maintain and get through a lot of those storms in this business and still be able to yeah. keep a clean face, be able to kill, still keep your integrity, uh, to be able mm -hmm. to still be a person of, of honor. Uh, that is different. I was watching on Entertainment Tonight when he had this whole, they did a whole profile on the song and I was watching, I'm like, wow, he's performing There Goes yeah. My Baby and then it goes into Boyfriend. And the fact that those are both turn the lights on moments. Yeah. It's like really incredible. You know? Well, my most meaningful probably was mm. Dive by Usher. Um, I thought that was I thought that was some of my best writing. I thought that No Such Thing is Too Late for Brandy was some of my best writing. And mm -hmm. those are two songs that were not huge hits. But I do know that um I just I just yeah. thought that it was genius level writing. And I, and I mean that humbly because I, I, I feel like you've earned a little bit of, you know, you've earned it. But I just felt like that was genius level writing. You know, Dive, um, what I did with Dive was similar to what I was trying to do with Ellie Motivation. Rowling. Motivation was, was a song yeah. about, it was a very provocative song. So it was about a woman climaxing, but it was in a way that it's your grandmother right. could sing it and wouldn't yeah. blush. She would have no clue what she was saying. So Dive was the same way. It was about something very sexual, right. but I thought it was done in a, such a clever way. And then No Such Thing Is Too Late by Brandy was my take mm -hmm. on Let's Wait A While by Janet Jackson. So when I think about Jam and Lewis, when I think about, you know, Shiz and, and, and Rodney, um, I think about those collaborations and those writing the, the writing on those songs. I, I always try to challenge myself yeah. to have one of those. I always have any one of those that means something that just this, that people can hear when they're 40 years old, like myself, and think back yeah. and think, wow, that song meant so much to me. I'm... Yeah. So I think about the, a 12 year old kid listening to music, and I think to myself, how can I make this record that's going to make them feel the way I feel about um, LaShawn Daniels? 
um, rest in peace. And and the way I feel about Rodney Jerkins, and the way I feel about Timberland and Missy, and the way I feel about Jimmy Jam yeah. and Terry Lewis, and the way I feel about Tim yeah. and Bob and Brian Michael Cox and Jermaine Dupree. Like, how do I make the music that's gonna have them when they're grown playing their chanting for their children and saying, this, listen to the lyrics of this. That is the challenge I have. And also um, being able to mm -hmm. compete in pop culture um, amongst an audience that sometimes may yeah. not value, see the value yeah. right away. <laughs> I feel I can I can feel myself getting better. I can feel my um, gift growing. I can feel um, the challenge. I write I like I write really well when I'm under pressure, and when I, I write extremely well when I feel like yeah. um, I'm backed in a corner. You know what I mean? And I feel like that in a, in many ways in life. So I think that I create the best in those situations, and then what comes from it is the thing that kind of saves. That yeah. Cause what I got you gonna wanna get when some said, What I got you gonna wanna get some Girl that's only if you ain't scared I just thought that was a cheat yeah. I just thought I, I could have said something more clever So when I hear certain things I think back to myself Like had I wrote that now I know mm -hmm. I would have been able to challenge myself to say something better But um, With Boyfriend I thought that it was a master class On concept, melody Vocal performance um, I thought it was was just a master class on telling a great story also daddy's home was really what i will say is great about daddy's home was that it has nothing to do right. with daddy being actually home it was about mm -hmm. usher being back mm -hmm. because he had went through the whole situation he was married and divorced and people felt like you know they were trying to challenge whether or not he was still a sex symbol so i think it was it was him saying yeah, yeah i got all these I'm, other things going on but i'm back yeah. Don't oh, worry. I love that. daddy's home and that was so the same thing with boyfriend if you listen to boyfriend he never meets the girl and i'm glad they showed that in the video because when you listen to the lyric i try my best to uh i try my best to, not to be all in your phone but i know that's not what you want gotta might as well keep some pictures of the two of us yeah. in your home think about posters of somebody you love when you slow yeah. dance by yourself i'm right behind you i'll smell my fragrance on your skin it will remind you or the nights yeah. we you know linked up or the times we dreamed up girl so it's saying like I'm in your imaginations. I remember a funny story when um I was on tour with Usher. I was about 17 years old. He said to me, um, this girl has been in love with me since she was a kid, bro. Don't ever take it like that. He, but he said it in yeah. such a cool way, not in an arrogant way. It was like, you have to understand that this is... I, like this is a moment that she probably would never be able to get again and she's going to take advantage of it now she don't know you and she don't owe you anything but just know that keep that in mind that what i've been able to build has been something that yeah. to meet me is something a dream for people and it's yeah. but to be able to be that self-aware you know to be able to know imagine living with the living knowing that every day of your life just you going outside affects somebody's entire life. You have yeah. given, you've given a person a story. You, you're giving, every time you leave your house, you're giving somebody a story to say, I was at the Texaco yeah. and Usher pulled up. Every yeah. time I go to this Texaco, I remember. So imagine being uh, in a position where every yeah. single day, if you're Usher, if you're Beyonce, if you're, you know, mm -hmm. like Drake, if you're The weekend, every yeah. time you leave your house, you are yeah. understanding that yeah. I'm changing somebody's whole story of their existence. Every the place that they met me at, they will never forget this place. Go, go, go. Turn the on. But the fact yeah, that is. she says turn the lights on is it's it's just a moment and um yeah. it's it's a it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be able to know that I contributed to culture in that way. And it's a blessing to know that something so um something I use to brand and and yeah. you know it worked, it, brand, it branded me. And the fact that Usher says it on his songs and, and Beyonce says it on the songs and, you know, you know, artists like Brandy and Monica, you know, these yeah. are people who are iconic, you know, Deborah Cox, um, you know, like these are people who I look to as like, wow. And, and I'm able to share these special, uh, there's something that, that means something so yeah. special to me, they're able to share with me. Yeah. And I'm, I'm a part of history in that way. That's incredible. Renaissance is probably gonna do a billion dollars. It's already at a half a billion. To be able to know that ton of lights on is being said around the world that lets you know like the, the the relevance of the gift that god has given me and the persistence and the consistency so i can be able to tell my children like you know this is not something that just happened this is i had to work very hard 
to be able to be in this position. Absolutely. And this, these moments are going to last forever.